guys, uh, today I have another display video for you. Uh, this time we're talking about a vacuum fluorescent display. This one uh, I took from a old DVD player, as you can see there, the DVD camera. So this is another simple enough display, but uh, it's it's more like a seven segment than the LCD, the Hitachi uh, LCD displays, because we just have this array of pins. Now you can buy a, a VFD with the driver chip already installed, but if you're going to recover it from a DVD player or something, you might not be able to communicate with those chips, so you might have to use uh, the actual pin out itself. So I'm going to talk about powering it from the pins. So, the first thing that uh, we need to understand is the different components. So, if you see here this large metallic section, and this large metallic section and just between them you can see these wires running along this way now, they are the filaments of the of the vacuum fluorescent display across these pins so on your display look for these two large sections going out to pins across them you want about 3.3 .3 volts and it'll be constant 3.3 .3 volts across them. Then the next section, if you can see this outline here, and there's another outline, and another outline. The, that is the grid section. You have to, if you want to select this digit, you power the the pin associated with that grid, that grid to uh, 12 volts or or more. Um, if you if you give it a bit more than 12 volts, it'll just be a little bit brighter. So that's the next thing. So we have 3.3 .3 volts across these two pins. Then to select this digit here, we power this pin with 12 volts. Now to get each uh, section, like the RDS or the kilohertz or megahertz section, we have to power another 12 volts on a pin over here. So back up and I'll do that now. So we've got our 3.3 volts those pins Let's cross our filament now we power our grid I, I'm using 24 volts here at the minute so it should be should be bright enough to see on the screen and now if I hit now oh these uh, these symbols like the kilohertz, megahertz or the dots, they are the anode of the display. So if I power the anode, you can see they're, they're lighting up there. It's not very clear on the camera. Okay, so it's very simple. Uh, I'll just lower the voltage and it might be clearer on the camera. Okay, so now I'm at 12 volts, so it seems to add any better slightly. As you can see it's a lot dimmer this time than it was the first time round. Now this um this is a bit challenging because you have to you have to power the pin to twelve volts so you can't just um use an NPN resistor like you would with the LED display. This time you have to use a PNP transistor, and um, that that would be because uh, you need to kind of you need to send the positive voltage rather than making the connection to ground, as you would with an NPN. So use your PNPs because because you need to you need to control the high voltage, which is 12, 24 volts, something like that. But you can't control that from an Arduino, so you have to use the PNP transistor to uh, amplify the signal. Basically, so your five volts from your Arduino switches the PNP transistor, and that switches the power to one of these legs and turns on the element that you're trying to turn on. Another another thing that you can do is get a, a vacuum fluorescent display driver chip and just wire it up and use it in the same way. And Basically that's it, it's very simple and very 
easy to get these uh, modules. Like I said, I got this one out of a DVD player, and there's lots of things they uh, take vacuum first and displays old, old car dashboards from like the 80s would probably have uh, some pretty fancy displays or um, uh, a sound system that might have um, a kind of uh, some sort of uh, signal analyzer type of thing, uh, you know, like a bar graph. Uh, from the audio signal but um, yeah that's all I have uh, today just this simple little display you get them more complex actually uh, just so you know one. this one is the same idea although as you can see it's kind of like the uh, it's kind of like the Hitachi LCD displays because now you ha we have an array of dots or a dot matrix display basically the same as a dot matrix display We've an awful lot more pins on this display. It makes it a lot more complex, so you'd be soldering an awful lot of pins to uh, to control this one. Now, I think this one came out of some old industrial electronics, actually. So I'm not sure you'd find something like this in uh, in a DVD player. I think it's going to be this kind of custom one with all these symbols on the top. So okay, that's all I have about the vacuum fluorescent display. I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. So let me know in the comments if you want to see more things like this, or if you have suggestions of what you'd like to see. Uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.